Hello, and thank you for your interest in iDemand 4, the world's most powerful and user-friendly system for test and item analysis with classical test theory. The separate tutorial has presented an overview of how to run iDemand and successfully produce the output files. This tutorial provides a brief overview on the interpretation of the output files. There are three main output files for iDemand. The primary one is an RTF file that is an extensive report uh, in Microsoft Word type format that can be printed or presented via like a webinar to subject matter experts to allow items to be easily evaluated. We also produce a CSV file which is a spreadsheet of all the numbers from the RTF file but are neatly arranged into a spreadsheet so that you can sort, highlight, and do other sorts of spreadsheet things with it. And lastly, we produce a CSV that is just a simple list of scores. Uh, so first, let me check this scores CSV file. And you can see that it has a number of columns where it produces different types of scores for each examinee. Each examinee will be a row. So the second row here is the first examinee. You can see its name was examinee 001. That examinee got 36 out of the total 40 items, uh, 30 out of the scored items, correct, uh, 6 of the pretest items. In terms of proportions, that was a 0.88 proportion out of the scored items. The uh, percentile rank was a 54, uh, and their rank within the sample was 23. Uh, in terms of high, medium, or low grouping, if you recall, this sample was split into three groups. Uh, for the purposes of quantile plots, this person was in group 2, and their scores on domains 1, 2, and 3 are presented here. And then also the scaled scores on for the total and scaled domain 1, scaled domain 2, and scaled domain 3. The scaled score I had arbitrarily chosen was uh, multiply the raw score by 2 and add to 100. Uh, and then lastly at the end we have classification, pass or fail, uh, based on a raw cut score of 21 that was randomly chosen, and then uh, classical conditional standard error of measurement using Lord's approximations. Um, for more information on these, uh, please check the manual. So you can see uh, this output file just provides a simple list of scores um, so you can sort and arrange people uh, to further analysis by importing it into SPSS or some analysis spreadsheet software like that. Uh, it's also useful for uploading into additional candidate management type systems, learning management systems, or even using as a mail merge to produce uh, word score reports. Next is a CSV version of the output we will see in the RTF. Uh, you can see this will start by simply presenting basic information about the test, and then summary statistics such as the mean, standard deviation, minimum, maximum, then a reliability analysis provides the alpha reliability, or KR20, uh, the standard error of measurement based on that, and then a split half based on a random splitting, uh, first last splitting, and an uneven splitting, and then also the Spearman-Brown, which is the SB for each of those three. And it does this for scored items, alt items, pretest items, and then each of the domains alone. Uh, then finally, it provides a list of important statistics for each of the items. Uh, where in this table, each row is going to be an item. So this here is the first item, and you can see there is an N of 50, so this item was answered by 50 people. Uh, the p-value, or difficulty, was 0.92, so it was a fairly easy item. Uh, the total RPBIS, or point by serial correlation, was a slight negative. That's mostly because it was a small sample and a very easy question. Uh, and then we also provide a domain, RPViz, and an alpha without. Uh, the flags for the item, uh, these flags represent possible issues with the item. In this case, a K refers to a possible key error, and an LR means a low RPViz, uh, because it, we set it up to have a minimum of 0 0.00. Anything below that gets flagged. And uh, then we provide basic frequencies for omit uh, each of the responses then proportions for omit in each of the responses, uh, point by serials for omit in each of the responses, 
by serials for the omit in each of the responses. Uh, the mean score out of everybody who chose omit in each of those responses. And then standard deviation of the scores for those who chose each of the responses. Uh, and then lastly, the p-values uh, that go into the quantile plot. Uh, so you can see this is a very wide table with a large number of columns, but it provides nice and easy sorting. The same information is then provided lower where it has been sorted uh, or rearranged to be a little more visually appealing, um, but is not able to be sorted as well because it's not all in one row for one item. Uh, so you can see here, we now have one item. Here's its basic overall statistics and information. But then the option information for A, B, C, D, omit, and not reached uh, is presented as this more compact table. Uh, and this table will also be visible within the uh, RTF output. So let me move to the RTF output. Uh, now the RTF output uh, is an older file format. Um, so it can tend to be large file sizes like you see here. But a uh, quick tip is to, first time you open the RTF file, save it as a doc or docx file in Microsoft Word, uh, which are newer formats and therefore much more space efficient or size efficient. Uh, the file size, even though it presents the same information, might be one-tenth as large if you save it as a docx. So you can see how item N4 provides a Word, Microsoft Word style report here. It provides a title page, uh, which you can adapt as you feel like. It's provided with stock information based on ASC, but you can replace it with your own logo if you wish. Then the initial part of the report provides an introduction and records the specifications of how you of how you made item N run. Uh, so you can see it provides the paths for all of your files, input and output, and then records all of the specifications from the GUI or interface of the program, such as um, how many items there were, what was the minimum P that you set, uh, whether you used an item and three header, how many columns there were for the IDs. Pretty much everything you put into the program is recorded here purely for posterity. So if you need to run the program again, uh, or if you're do an analysis once a year and you come back the second year, you can't remember exactly what you did the first year, it is all going to be recorded here for you. Uh, the next part provides summary statistics. Uh, these are just basic descriptive statistics such as the mean, standard deviation, minimum, maximum, the mean p-value, and then the mean point by serial discrimination. Now this is done for all items, scored items, pretest items, then the domains, and then also the scaled um, scores for each of the domains. Uh, the next important table is a reliability analysis, uh, which I showed in the CSV file, um, but is a little cleaner here, uh, easier to review. Uh, you can see this test that we had here had pretty good reliability with an alpha of 0 0.089 on a scale of 0 to 1, but also provided three estimates of split half reliability though that needs to be stepped up using the Spearman Brown correction formula. And you can see the split half reliabilities are 0 0.91, 0 0.81, and 0.87, which are also acceptable for a test that's only 50 items. The next piece of output is a list of the items that were flagged, that is, those items that did not meet the criteria that you specified when laying out your output options when running the program. Uh, you can see there were five items that were flagged here, 1, 5, 7, 29, and 37. Uh, item 1 had a possible key issue and a low R. And then item 5, 7, and 9 had a high P, hence the HP flag, so they were very easy. And then item 37 had a possible key issue as well. And then lastly, uh, if you are using this analysis for a pass-fail, type analysis, it provides a cons classification consistency. Uh, this is useful if you're doing uh, an accredited certification program because you will have to submit that number. 
Then the report provides uh, tables and figures for group frequency distributions, including the scored items in each of the domains. Uh, this is a fairly easy test. I mean, most people run the positive end. Point by serials were quite positive. Uh, and then the last graph it provides is a P by point by serial graph, um, which allows you to gauge whether there are certain items that do not appear to be similar to the other items and how they're performing. Then we provide a approximation of the conditional standard error of measurement using uh, Lord's Formula 4. Then the remainder of the analysis is an item by item detailed analysis, you know, one page for each item, closely evaluating the statistics for that item. And this initial page here with all this text provides some information on how to interpret it, um, but I'll also provide a brief overview right now. First of all, each page includes the quantile plot, if you chose to produce a quantile plot, a table for basic item information, which is essentially what was included in your control file, the overall item statistics, then the option statistics, and then the quantile plot data, which is the, the numbers that are visible in the plot above. So you can see this item was fairly easy. 92% answered it correctly. It had a moderately positive point by serial for the domain, um, but a slightly negative point by serial for the total score. And you can see from the graphical analysis, what this is saying is that if we split our group up into three subgroups, one, two, and three, for high, medium, and low ability, you can see that each of those ability levels, pretty much everybody chose the correct answer, which was A. On the other hand, if we go to item number three here, we see that is not the case. Uh, this item was doing a very good job of discriminating uh, because only about 45% of the lowest students were able to get this item correct, but approximately 95% of the medium and high students were able to get it correct. Uh, so this item is then discriminating or differentiating students well, and you can see that here in the point by serial, the domain point by serial is 0.56, which is very strong, and the total point by serial is 0.47, which is very strong. Now the next table is the option statistics. Now you can see for each option, this is a four option multiple choice question, it provides the number that chose each option, the proportion that that number converts to, uh, the point by serial for each option, and the, its cousin, the by serial. This point by serial is very useful because it indicates whether the item is positively differentiating among examinees. And we want to look for items that have a positive correlation for the key, like we see here. Well, the remainder are all negative. And this is a very good, or indicative of a very good item. If an item has a positive correlation for one of the incorrect answers, called a distractor, uh, or a negative correlation for the correct answer, the key, that's highly indicative of a possible issue with the item's content, and the item should be closely reviewed. So as you can see, the remainder of this report produces one page for each item, a detailed analysis providing both the quantile plot and the several tables. And then you can simply proceed through this and evaluate either all items or just those items that you have flagged as having possible statistics. However, most of the interpretation is not something that can be directly recommended via to this tutorial or another reference um, because it comes with experience in being able to interpret the results and then also correlating the statistical results to the actual content of the items and trying to interpret and diagnose what exactly is the possible issue with the item. That concludes this tutorial on the item man output. Another tutorial discusses how to run the item man output. I recommend that you also watch that video. And then future videos will also discuss item man's cousin, Excalibur, which provides a similar type of output but focuses on item response theory calibration, which is the modern approach to assessment. Thank you.